Hello, everybody. Um, I think it was a very good introduction what Marina had been done because uh, my presentation would be about how functiona functionally, how, fu oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I was saying that uh, we are very excited about the, um, the release of Moodle uh, Workplace 4 and also that the introduction of Marina explaining what dynamic rules are and the possibilities of the um, structure the w um, in Moodle Workplace will help you to understand my presentation. That is a functional configuration into a context of competencies and Moodle Workplace. So, well, as, uh, as uh, he presented, my name is Mary Chet Reves and I work as a project manager in Trasipun. Uh, you probably know us and we have a stand there and we are a premium Moodle partners. And uh, well, I wanted to explain you a little bit about us, but if you want to know more, you can just come to us and, and any of our team will be happy to, to explain our story and what we do and when we started. And also we have this open source philosophy and a lot of companies that already work with us and we were able to make reality their projects. And thanks to Moodle Workplace, we, we were also able to give um, to our customers the possibility to train their employees in, in a very flexible um, manner. So the objective of this presentation would be to show a case study of how to use competencies in Moodle Workplace platform. So competen competences and will be the Moodle competences and then we will be using all the Moodle Workplace features to uh, enhance or to potentialize the, um, the different actions and to arrive to the final user. So it will be a path from competences out evaluation to the assignment of personalized learning plans by job profile. I will structure in these parts my presentation and I will try to be a bit brief because I know we don't have much time, but I will explain the scenario, how we design the solution, the competencies assessment, competencies frameworks, learning plans, certificates, and how Moodle Workplace was um, able to gather all these, um, his functionalities together with the Moodle um, competence. And what, uh, th this is a project that uh, it started a few months ago. It's uh, alive for three months now. So we are improving and trying to find uh, a way to make it much better for the, the final user. So the scenario. The project started from a client's need. We had a client and we implemented Moodle Workplace with all the functionalities and of the different tenants and of all the possibilities of the reports, the organization structure, and then the client was very happy and said, let's take a step further. This client, it's a client that delivers training to companies, administrations, and professionals in the water sector. It offers internal and external training to users, also some MOOC courses. And the profile of the participants include professionals from operational fields, uh, also administrative staff, and professionals with technical profile and middle management. So it's a very specific area. And what the client need, what the client need or wanted was to personalize the learning plans for the students according to their job positions and to their previous training experience. And they wanted to promote employee self-learning and enhancing their productivity. And they wanted to do it by reducing the management time, the administrator time. So make it in the most automatic possible way. So, and what was our advantage, or how we do it? We took, um, we implemented in Moodle Workplace, so it was the platform that, that they started to know, and what we used it was a competency framework provided by the client, and the competency model that's included in Moodle Workplace, and it's the same that um, we have in, in Moodle. I will briefly explain the, the user journey to know the solution. So the first thing that uh, we need to do is to allocate the user into a job position. So you know, 
by now you know the job positions, so we need to, to add a user to set in, in a position into a department. Automatically, because we have added the user into this structure, the user will be able um, to access to an assessment of competencies. Upon the completion of the assessment of competencies, the user will be enrolled into programs, which is a set of courses, as you have seen in the previous presentation, and also into courses. So these courses would be the courses that are the ones that he, he didn't pass or he, they were not evaluated positively in the assessment. Then the student is ready to do uh, the courses. So he will go to the dashboard of Moodle Workplace and will have programs and also mandatory courses. When the users, when the user finish courses or when the user finish uh, competences, because both things they will be related, they will be awarded with badges, but also we give you an extra opportunity to have all the full path uh, courses with the platform, with the courses that the, um, the client provides. So if the users, they finalize all the, the courses, not only the ones that they said they are mandatory, that the ones that uh, he doesn't have the competence, so if he wants to refresh the, the knowledge, he will have also a certificate and this certificate will, will be an award saying, yes, you have coursed, you have done all the path with the company. So this it looks very simple, it's not anything new, but we need a lot of magic, admin magic, so a lot of configuration behind. I won't go into detail, but for example, if we focus in, in the step two for the user to be enrolled into an assessment of competences before we need to have competencies framework, learning plans, um, cohorts and users assigned to these learning plans, so we need to have all the structure created. So, let's now move into the competency assessment. The competency assessment, uh, we had an advantage that the user already was evaluating the users, had an, uh, an evaluation of competencies. These competencies are um, from the Spanish government. It's a model from the Spanish government in the um, sanitary industry that the, the client adapted. So what we have done, it's, um, well, sorry, jump. I will explain you later how we have done it. But first, I think it's important to know what is uh, understanding the, the competency. So um, sometimes it's difficult to know what a competency is, what a skill is, and what is the most difficult thing for a company is to have this framework of competencies well set. So what is a competency? A, a competency is what a user needs to do efficiently uh, a job, their daily tasks. Right? So we have here some more definitions, but um, what is important is that a competency can be divided into measurable knowledge, skills, and abilities. So in this context, you will see that from now on, we call subcompetences in the project. So it will be this name, competencies, subcompetencies. And obviously, these subcompetencies for us will be measurable skills, something that we can learn to have some competences and be uh, and do efficiently our job. So let's start with the model. What you see here will be some uh, screenshots in uh, Spanish. I use the administrative uh, competencies instead of the one related to the more technical operation users because uh, this company w uh, works with the water sector, so it's very technical and this probably it's easy to, to understand. So the user will be enrolled into this course and into this course will have a set of um, different sections. In each section will have some quizzes and these quizzes, they will evaluate the subcompetence, right? So it will be divided a competency in subcompetencies and to have a subcompetency achieved, 
I will be need to be answering positively to the different questions. So, a questioners in Moodle. These questions, they are auto-evaluation questions. So, what the user will need to answer is if it's capable to do the, the task, if it's capable to do the task and help others, if it's, uh, capable, if it's not capable to do the task, or if he might do it but needs help. So he will be competent when he says that it's capable to do the task, or it's capable and do it with, um, and help others. So as you know, in, in Moodle, we have two ways to attach competencies. We can attach or we can have a competency when we finish positively an activity and also when we finish a course. So in this assessment, when the user was finishing uh, or answering positively uh, the questionnaire, will be, uh, will be um, achieved with the specific subcompetence. Everything is a bit confusing, and obviously for the final user, it could be a bit confusing, so what we have done is to add a prompt with a video, and in this video explaining what is expected from the user and what will happen after he finishes the, um, answering the questions. Sorry. As you can see, it's nothing new, it's nothing amazing. So what we are doing is just taking the functionalities of Moodle and Moodle Workplace and starting to build this ecosystem that works by itself. So when the user finishes the assessment, it will be enrolled into courses and into programs as, as we saw, as we seen before. So programs is a set of courses. Yeah, and when we are enrolled into, in, into courses, we can be enrolled in a single course or in Moodle Workplace, we can be enrolled into a set of courses. So what we have done is to create a set of programs that are mandatory for a job profile, and these uh, mandatory courses and these programs of the job profile will be always available for the student to, um, to be coursed, and then, the user will be also enrolled into the individual courses that he was not having a passing rate on the subcompetences, to say it in somehow. And how we have done it? So we have been using the dynamic rules, the, the ones that Marina was explaining. So dynamic rules are very powerful because they are allow you to not only to enroll, but they can unenroll users from a place, so, and you can manage the enrollments very easily with just a specific uh, condition action. So, and as a result, the user will see in the dashboard some courses and always the program. And these courses that he sees, they are only the courses that still not finish to complete the learning plan. So if the user, this, in this case, finish the course, Atención al Clienta, once it's finished, it will disappear from the dashboard. And only the remaining courses are the ones that are not the, mm, completed from the learning plan. So the learning plan, as you can see on the right corner, it's always available for the student. It's a learning plan, as, as Moodle has. And in the learning plan, he will always see the competencies associated, the competencies that has achieved, and the description of each one, obviously, and the linked courses. In the linked courses, always will have the assessment course and the, the course linked to that subcompetence. Uh, sub so it's a structure in a way, the training, that each course, upon completion, you have a subcompetence. We'll see now that the framework, why it's in this way, right? And these are some condition actions, so sort of dynamic rules that they allow this process. So I won't go into detail. But so to create competences, we need the competencies framework. This is uh, a structure of competences and uh, a hierarchy of different um, 
competences. <laughs> so you can see that in the competency framework, we have created a structure that relates to the position. So each position into the organization structure will have a um, competency framework associated. I know this maybe screenshot is a little bit small, but uh, I'm sure you are familiarized with this structure. As you can see here, you have the competence, and then under the competence, you have the subcompetences. This main competence will be achieved with when these all subcompetences are done. These subcompetences, as we, I said before, it can be achieved by doing the course or by um, answering positively to the assessment. Positively, it means that in a questionnaire, the 60, they have 60% 60 of the questions positive. So this will be a simple rule. So the users, they will be proficient or not proficient on the competence. And what we have done is to add also uh, descriptions to help the user to be guided through this uh, process. And we have added the name of the program associated. So the user always know that there is the program. In a program has a set of courses. And also that he has these competences associated to little courses. And obviously, when he has all these subcompetences awarded, he will have the competency and will be awarded with a badge. And if we have um, the competency framework, we need the learning plans to associate these competences to the students. So again, what we have done is to create learning plans template per each job position. And how we mixed and how we add all this information. What we have used is, first of all, cohorts. Each learning plan will have a cohort associated. And to associate the users to core, we will be using again the dynamic rules. So the only manual thing that the administrator needs to do here is to add the core into the learning plans. And if the user decides that wants to go th all through the learning pa path, do all the courses of the program because he decides that wants to rephrase the knowledge, what we will have will be a certificate afterwards. Here it's in the only part that we added a little bit of development, but I need to say that certificates are very good in, in Moodle Workplace, as what they are not related only to a course, but you can relate a certificate to a program or to um, a set of, of courses. So, and we use, again, dynamic rules to do this uh, association. So upon completion, the user will receive this uh, certificate, in the certificate, will have the name of the competence and also the courses associated and the completion date, etc. These are um, dynamic fields that we can always add and they are not Moodle Workplace. And Moodle Workplace, well, we have seen that we have been using the programs, the organization structure, the dynamic rules, and the certificates. This is um, like we have configured like the 20% of the organization competency framework. And to do these um, seven positions that they have 13 competencies and 94 subcompetences associated, we have created these 42 programs, 200, 200 courses, and 136 dynamic rules. So dynamic rules are very useful, very easy to create. They, they can give you a lot of um, automatization. And yes, and you need to have a lot of patience as well because. And as you can see here, we have only two certificates. That's a, a good improvement in Moodle Workplace because you have a template and, and this template will um, this template will help to, um, to use over and over for the different courses, programs, etc. With uh, the dynamic uh, fields will, will work perfectly. So 
and what we are working on and what we think we can add value. And now here it will come the development or maybe Moodle Workplace would like to um, improve some of the competencies assessment. Because uh, we think that assess all the competencies in a course and in a course in two different sections and in two different questionnaires, it's a little bit hard for the users. So we are designing a SCORM. This SCORM will have all the competences integrated and we, up, upon the completion of the different competences, it will communicate with the framework of Moodle Workplace. So it's not that I finish the Moodle, I the SCORM and I have a positive or negative competence, I'm proficient or not, that I can divide these uh, competences. And also we would like to give some um, graphics and um, some feedback to the student and to have a dashboard to show to the, the responsibles and the coordinators how the competences uh, are, are achieved by the, the different tenants. So there are some plugins that they do, um, they are very good on doing, on showing and displaying the results, but because they are not, they are not uh, taking the tenants in, into account, they, they are not working for us. So, and also we would like to add the possibility to have for each competence and for each student um, the information of if this competence is achieved by doing the course or if this competence is achieved by answering the, the questionnaire. So to wrap up very quickly, what I wanted to show here that it's very easy to create an um, automatic path using the competencies but what, what you need is to a very well-defined hierarchy of job positions, competences frameworks per positions, competences evaluation, and courses designed to teach specific skills. And then these four elements together with Moodle Workplace, you can have a very automatic and fantastic learning ecosystem. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maricel. I don't know, is there any question anybody wants to, okay? Paulius. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, what do you think, and maybe you have some requests in the future about the reporting? Do you plan to use the custom reports, report builder for that, or create custom reports by yourself? Yeah, this is a very, we also wanted to, to have some reports and with this uh, new application we would like to have the dashboard and this new dashboard would be a report of how many competences were achieved by in the platform and then also by the user. So, and if it can be implemented into the reports of Moodle Workplace would be fantastic, but at the moment still not there. Yeah, I, I'm very impressed that you say it's very easy after creating 136 dynamic rules. <laughs> but it's an option of copy, copy, copy. Uh, okay. And then you just <laughs> Good. But have you some experience with doing a project with competencies with a normal Moodle and compare this to Moodle Workplace? Are there, is there a functionality which supports you better or is it very close to... I'm not sure if I understood well, but you mean if uh, the functionality is the same than Moodle? In yes, for, for the competencies. Because it's the same. It's exactly the same functionality. And, and the competencies, they don't take tenants into account. They are just um, on the hierarchically top okay. way. And then you can use them by using these dynamic rules, etc., or by creating different frameworks for, for the different tenants. So the dynamic rules will be uh, used into the different tenants to do different actions. So there's still no clear reporting on competencies about the users and so on? The no. Same, same problems as yeah, before. Exactly, okay. exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah, exactly, exactly. Thank you. Hi there, um, that's very interesting. We really enjoyed the presentation. We just have a very quick question on how users were created and assigned to jobs or and how many users were they at the end? 
Well, we, they are allowed around 2,000 um, users, and there are, they were in two different ways assigned to um, the job positions. We have uh, an integration so with uh, the CRM, and you can do it also with a CBS um, file. In the same way that you upload in, in Moodle, you can upload in, in Moodle Workplace.